Welcome to Nightchild Talks Prince, uncut and unscripted. Welcome back to Nightchild Talks Prince, stripping down Prince's discography like a Peter Paul Zaman Joy. Now, I want to say three things today. The first thing is just a little thank you. The support I've had uh, for doing this podcast has been amazing. And thanks to you guys, I just feel in such a better place. And it's all down to you. It truly means the world, your support and um, allowing me to do this thing, which um, just allowed me to be part of this community. So I want to say a deep, heartfelt thank you. The second thing I want to mention is there's a Prince official uh, musicology 20th anniversary, can't believe it's been 20 years, sweepstake. It's on the Prince uh, website. Uh, Obviously, if you go to store.prince.com or prince.com, you can win a 2LP purple vinyl. Um, You can win um, a hoodie. It's kind of a, a purple musicology tour 2000 forever purple hoodie. There's a T-shirt there with uh, musicology uh, cover art on it and also another T-shirt, a whole bundle. Apparently it's worth about about $230 and there's a sweepstake. Obviously, as always, read the rules. Um, I know that it's available in America and the UK and some other places, but I don't think it's available everywhere in the world. So always check the rules before you enter, but it's free. So enter the uh, musicology 20th anniversary sweepstake and you never know you may have that winging all the way to you i think you also get a hundred pound e-gift card for the print store so you can also choose something you know you want to buy yourself now the third thing i really want to talk about is i've spent this week listening to as many copies of the prints uh, piano and microphone tour that i can obviously nothing official exists but there are things out there on YouTube and various other places and I've been listening to Prince's work and I know I sound like a stuck record but for the love of all that is purple release it seriously it's beautiful listening back to it really hit me first of all obviously at the time we you know people noticed things Prince was saying about uh, his father and about vanity, but that was not what hit me this time. Prince, on a number of these recordings, talked about self-preservation. He talked about how self-preservation was important and that he had to take care of him in order to take care of us. And he said on the tour uh, performing, he said that you have to look after yourself first in order to help others and that he was on a new journey and he kept saying that and I was listening to it and he kept repeating self-preservation and he mentioned self-preservation while singing cream and saying you need to look in the mirror and you know look at yourself and that kind of self-belief but also in thieves in the temple and there was a line in thieves in the temple he repeated when he said, help me with the thieves in the temple, help me with the thieves. And it just really hit me, the self-preservation, the reflection. It's just an incredibly poignant thing. Now, it's also something that should have been released straight away. Everyone knows that. It should have been, you know, one of the first things the estate released, but it wasn't. And the waters have been a bit muddied because the piano and microphone 83 came out quite quickly. And for a lot of people, the general public, they don't really understand the difference. They are very much, well, there's already been a Prince and Piano album. Why do you need another one? Of course, the Prince and the Prince sort of piano uh, album was in 83. It was a rehearsal. It wasn't meant for public consumption. This is a show for the public towards the end of his career looking back reflecting and it's a completely different thing obviously it contains so many hits but also so many unexpected tracks but the one thing that blew me away as well is just the vocal clarity i mean prince's voice oh my 
goodness, Prince's voice is incredible. And I'm not just talking about the remarkable screams he does. I'm not just talking about his falsetto, but his falsetto is stunning. I actually think his vocals, arguably, in some ways were never better. He was sitting there and giving his all at the piano. There's nowhere to hide and his vocals were turned up and they were beautiful. Utterly stunning. I mean, the vocal clarity is just breathtaking. When you listen to it, it really hits you. I can't over-exaggerate how good these vocals sound. I remember at the time, uh, people uh, who weren't Prince fans were quite surprised that Prince was going to be doing this. They commented uh, on my Twitter feed, you know, did, did does Prince even play piano? Uh, you know, they uh, people were said, uh, I didn't even know he played piano. Uh, they were quite shocked. So it was extraordinary to have this ability that the general public weren't as aware of as they should have been. I found it interesting for me because when I first got into Prince, one of the first tours, well, the first tour I went to was the Nude Tour. And the Nude Tour was portrayed as this stripped down version of Prince. And now, looking back at it, it was a full scale production with lights and dancers and backing singers in it, just, just the whole nine yards. Obviously, compared to Love Sexy or Son of Times, it was, I suppose, stripped down, but really, it's quite an elaborate production. Then, later on in his career, Prince toured with Third Eye Girl, and I thought, wow, this is incredibly stripped down. Just, just Prince and Third Eye Girl, a small, tight-knit group of Ida, Hannah, Donna. Just incredible. I thought, well, after this, he must go to a big band again. He must do, because where else could he go? He couldn't strip it down anymore, but he did. He stripped it down to a piano, a microphone, and a spotlight. And his incredible genius. And I think one of the things I also thought about was that quote from Prince, which I've always liked. And this is the quote Prince uh, said. When you don't talk down to your audience, then they can grow with you. I give them a lot of credit to be able to hang with me this long because I've gone through a lot of changes. But they've allowed me to grow. And thus, we can tackle some serious subjects and try to just be better human beings, all of us. And I think that's interesting. Prince was on a journey and just hearing him talk about self-preservation, about this new journey, he was trying to tell us so many things and it really hit home listening to that and I just want it released. I really do. It's such an easy win. It was professionally recorded. It was filmed. The audio's there. It's all there. It's all ready in a sense. You know, it wouldn't take a great deal to release it. And it should have been one of the first things to be released. Usually, you know, when an artist passes, the final tour is something that is incredibly precious to people who follow them. And this was unlike any other Prince tour this is Prince at his most intimate, his most open, his most vulnerable. And it needs to be out there. It is stunning. From the vocals, the reflection, the choice of songs, the amount of songs, his dexterity on the piano, just his journey, the way he was trying to make sense of his life. Obviously, yes, he did talk about his father. He talked about funk is in the spaces. He talked about uh, his mother and he talked about their relationship through his music whilst playing his music. It was cathartic and powerful. And yet even then, I don't think we fully took in all that he was saying to us, all that he was mentioning. I just that line helped me with the thieves self-preservation i need to take care of me to take care of you you have to look after yourself first in order to help others we're on a new journey there's just so much to unpack so much to think about and i just you know i just want this released i really do it it's something that should have happened a long time ago we are sadly now coming up to 
it will be eight years since Prince passed in a week. And I just think this should be out. I really do. It's beautiful. It's poignant. If you close your eyes or just listen to it on headphones, the intimacy is incredible. I'm making it sound quite um, melancholic. And at some points it is. And quite moving. But also there is humour there. There is Prince's energy. His life is his songs. He, he always said, if you want to know me, you know, listen to my music. And I think that's the key thing. And he was trying to work out his journey. And that's the thing I've always admired about Prince. He worked out his philosophy, his beliefs, his everything from religion, sex, uh, you know, politics, everything openly in public. And he shared it with us right from the very beginning with for you when he talked about you know with my life kind of you know there i'm going to share it i'm going to give every aspect of it to you and this is such an important album i realize there's lots of projects and everybody wants their own thing purple rain is going to be this year probably i mean we've heard nothing official but we assume something will happen there people want parade but this has to be up there as one of those projects that just desperately needs to be released it's been an incredible week listening to as many versions of that as I could just grab off the internet. And I just think done right, it would be incredible. There's obviously a number of different shows and how they put that together, I don't know. But I think make sure they're full shows. Don't chop different shows into each other because each show had its own feelings and its own story. But... I'd love to know what you think, you know, if you think that that's something that should be released, because I I can't tell you how much I really want that to happen. Also, quick question of the week. What are you listening to? I've spent the, the week listening to piano and microphone, but what are you listening to? What what Prince music have you last listened to? What was the last song you heard? Are you listening to an album or do you listen to kind of tracks more randomly? Just what takes your fancy or do you have your own playlist? I'd love to know. What are you listening to this week? Uh, in the Prince world? What track has caught your eye? What album are you rediscovering? What live performance have you dug out? I'd love to hear what you're listening to because it's really interesting to see where people are at. And thank you once again, and I'll see you very soon.